Hello folks and welcome to this week's review. And I have not one, not seven, but two Grado headphones for review in this particular video. Now, I know my friends who live in the good old United States of America will be screaming at me because they'll be saying, no, it isn't, it's Grado. Well, I happen to live in the good old United States of Kingdom. And, well, Grado it is then, hey. So what's going on here? Well, it's just one of those things you think about while you're boiling the kettle. When Grado tells me it has a pair of reference headphones ready for sale, then, well, I don't know about you, but I think that label sounds pretty impressive. And I wonder what they might sound like. But then the news of a hardware release under Grado's statement label also sounds rather highfalutin and attractive. What we have here are two impressive sounding rangers, I'm sure you'll agree, both under one Grado umbrella. So I wondered if I grabbed the best reference design and the best statement release and compared the two, would I even hear a difference? Now, is this scattering of rather august name tags more about marketing than substance perhaps or is there more to it in sound terms thus i grabbed the top of the range reference the rs1x priced at 799 pounds and 99p and the top of the range and rather larger statement headphones the gs3000x priced at a whopping 2195 pounds and I decided to compare and contrast in true GCSE examination style. Now, sure, the price point is a significant difference right off the bat, but I'm not putting any faith in those figures until I've heard the evidence with my own dainty ears. And I can feel a wave of sort of a cloud of technicality forming around my head, which means that I think we should move to a closer look. And welcome to the closer look section for a pair of Grado headphones, the RS1X and the GS3000X. Now, both designs are based on matched dynamic drivers, although the RS1X uses 50mm drivers and there are 52mm drivers stuffed into the GS3000X. The latter are apparently the company's most powerful to date. Both of these headphone designs are open backed. Both offer an impedance value of 38 ohms. But the reference apparently has a dynamic range of between 12 and 30 kilohertz, while the statement offers between 4 and 51 kilohertz. Now, both use wood to form their chassis. The RS1X uses a combination of three. There's maple sleeve in there, there's hemp core, and the final one, well, forgive me if I get this wrong and maybe you can help me out here, is it Cocobolo? Cocobolo, Cocobolo, I'm not too sure. Anyway, that's in there. As for the GS3000X, well, that only uses Cocobolo. In design terms, Grado has always had a retro look. So for example, if I saw the character Radar, wearing a pair in the classic TV comedy program, MASH, then it wouldn't really surprise me. That retro style has a cachet all of its own. In terms of comfort, well, Grado doesn't really go out of its way to make their headphones comfortable. Well, over and above, you might say. They're not really proactive in this area. The designs here are rather utilitarian for the price. I find all Grado's rather stripped and primitive in their broad design terms. And well, that design does appeal to many people. So it's a thing. And it so happens that both headphones in this test were fine in terms of comfort. The headband is rather hard, but not too uncomfortable. 
Well, I much preferred the GS3000X's ear pads, which sat around my ears. The ear pads for the RS1X headphones, on the other hand, rather perched on top of the ear, which felt a, it felt a little odd. Even so, I had no major fit or comfort issues during use. And essentially, that's it in tech terms. So, how do they sound and how do they compare? Well, let's go to the sound quality tests and we will find out. And welcome back to the sound quality tests for a pair of Grado headphones, namely the GS3000X in the statement range and the RS1X in the reference range. So, sound sources. Well, I began with CD and the very wonderful If Juz via the 4AD band compilation album Sound Pool, which came out in. Core 1999 now, I think, and I played the bass heavy instrumental track Re, R E, which also features a jangly lead guitar, a slightly less jangly rhythm guitar, and some drums. And I chose this track partly for the bass, but because jangly guitars are a good measure of the upper mid performance. Now, on this particular CD pressing, the upper mids are just a little bit accentuated. And the RS1X headphones pushed that accentuation still further. They did sound rather forward in those terms. Not actually bright, but they did push the frequencies to the max and towards that boundary. Saying that, the mid-range did pick up a lot of detail along the way. Even subtle points were highlighted. Bass from the RS1X was impressive with a solid rolling action that set a firm foundation for the song as a whole. I like the instrumental separation here too. There was plenty of air and space in the mid-range and the treble that allowed those frequencies to breathe. Swapping for the GS3000X headphones, I found the upper mid-range performance to be rather more civilized and less aggressive than the RS1X designs. The definition of the upper mids was better integrated within the mix from the GS3000X, while bass was both stronger than the RS1X designs, but also weightier with a greater mass. I then changed tack and also source. I went from CD to vinyl, and I played an 80s self-titled UK Soul LP from the X Lynx member David Grant, and I played the hit single from that LP, Watching You, Watching Me. Now, this is a strictly balanced recording, and it was more to the liking of the RS1X headphones, which offered a, offered a more even handed output. Even so, the upper mids on this track from those headphones, the RS1Xs, they were slightly reedy, perhaps a bit overly textured in their presentation, almost as if there was a slight compression in that frequency, and it produced a slightly claustrophobic feel. Now, in contrast, generally, the soundstage itself was quite open and airy. It was just the mids within that which sounded a bit constricted you might say. Bass, on the other hand, well, that had a field day. It was all over the place, very bouncy, very responsive, and it had an impressive impact. I then turned to the GS3000X designs, and they sounded more evenly presented of the two. Upper mids offered a more naturalistic presentation. They were smoother, with none of the RS1X's constriction in that area. The GS3000X headphones also produced a big rolling bass. Actually, if I was going to sum up the 3000s, well, I'd say that they produced a big burr of a sound. Heavy, weighty bass with 
mid-range and treble outputs that in themselves had substance and ballast. There was also a kind of a warmth to these headphones that fans of, say, modern leak components may wish to investigate. So that's basically the review of these headphones. So how can I sum up this review? Well, let me give you a few final thoughts, then we'll do some pros and cons, and then I'll give you a pair of ratings. So, two completely different sets of headphones here. And yes, the price difference is pretty large when you're looking at both of them. Now, the general specs at first glance pull them closer. And then there's those series labels, the reference and the statements, which also sound impressive. Even so, the sound envelopes couldn't be more different. The RS1X designs emphasize the upper frequencies and accentuate them for all they're worth. While, on the other hand, the GS3000X headphones instead, they focus on a big, strong, even cuddly hut. So what Grado has done here is they produced headphones to suit different ears and different musical bias. And I'm personally glad that choice exists. Pros and cons. Let's start with the RS1X reference series, shall we? Now in the good section, well, these headphones are compact in design. You could even use them as mobile headphones. In terms of sound, bass response was very nice indeed. Quite impactful. The soundstage on a general level, very spacious. And finally, the RS1Xs grabbed detail by the ton. In the bad section, mid-range was a little bit forward for my liking. Also, the on-ear fit it just felt a little bit perched upon my ears. And finally, the cable I felt was a bit short. I would have liked a longer cable. Over to the GS3000X. Well, that gets its own pros and cons, of course. And in the good section, I was very happy with the generally balanced performance. Yes, the mids were rather warming, but generally speaking, this was pretty balanced. As for those mids, they were relatively smooth, and I also liked that. In terms of bass, that was big and massy and powerful. The overall presentation from these headphones were comforting. It was very easy to listen to. In the bad section, well, that warming sound may be rather marmite. It might not be for everyone. And again, I could have done with a longer cable. So what does that mean in terms of ratings? Well, the RS1X to me was a bit of a mixed bag. Not bad headphones at all. Of course, they are very nice indeed, but maybe not award-winning headphones in my eyes or in my ears at least. So I'm going to be giving them 7 out of 10. However, the GX3000Xs, well, I feel as though in broad terms they are a cut above, and I like them very much. I'll be giving those an 8 and a groovy award. Congratulations to Grado. And that's your lot. Thank you for staying to the end of this video, and thank you for all of your support too. It's much appreciated. Could I ask you before you go, could you click on the like and subscribe buttons if you haven't already done so down below? That would just help the channel. And further down in the description are links to my website and my Facebook group if you fancy joining that. Also my Patreon page, which keeps this channel going. Also has a load of exclusive material over there. And also, if you want to see these videos before they're published on YouTube, they're published on Patreon a few days before here. So if you do subscribe to Patreon, you will get early views of all my videos. Anyway, I'll be back on Friday for Hi-Fi News, etc. with all kinds of 
weird and wonderful goodies, including news, of course, plus other stuff. Hope to see you then. Hope to have your company. And that's about it. So until then, folks, bye-bye for now.